Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lore Master Investigation, where we muse on top of our fantasy floating castle, sipping on elven... I was going to do something different, but all that keeps coming to mind is moon juice. I'm Cody. <laughs> and I'm Joe. And I and we are here to, to wax poetic about Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. Games. Yeah. Have you been... Cody. I have been well. I've been musing on all of all things that are the new Dungeons and Dragons supplement and the Tasha's cauldron thingy. Yeah, and um I think they just leaked or announced. I leaked is not the right word. Um the new lineage system. I didn't get to read Ooh. it yet, but um of I'm course sure everyone that. on the internet is you either like yeah you either love it or you hate it because people are like uh sure <laughs> like don't 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 touch my don't touch my toy box right and it's like hey you you don't have to play with with these if you don't want to right like you can be the you can be the the person who is like orcs are always evil and that will never change and it's like okay sure and you're gonna i, I mean go for that i suppose yeah you're just but gonna like... invite only the people who agree with you and like if that's if that's the world you want to live in and you don't want any kind of change whatsoever then you know you do you man i'm I know, right? but i love new new rules new new stuff oh, i'm yeah. actually the my side game that i'm running with uh some friends from uh my college days uh -huh. um we're actually taking a break from my campaign so that because they're they're just starting to hit level three and okay. I want to let them look through Tasha's and see if they want to like build up their lineage because we haven't really done sure. a whole lot of like building. It's a lot. It's been a lot of like, here's what you're doing. How do you want to do it kind of stuff like we haven't had. A whole, so it's like the perfect time to kind of go back and be like, all right. How would you yeah. like to do this in the system? So yeah, we're taking a break from that, but uh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I'm really excited about that book. I can't wait till it comes out. Oh yeah, I know it's it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. But anyway, speaking speaking of books, ah, rah, someone's rah, rah. ears must have been burning. Yep 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 yep. Oh, it's, it's Bookie. Bookie. Hi, Bookie. How's it going, bud? yeah i speak bookie now oh nice he's he said i'm excited to be on the show I was, thanks bookie all right you uh, mean you understand bookie speech yeah well and, I, and i'm gonna say back oh okay so okay you do both okay i got it i got it yeah it's like it's like a han solo thing sure sure you know where it's like everyone's like because he he speaks Wookiee, right and it's like he never actually speaks it except for in solo star wars story the best star wars movie um but anyway uh Boogie's wait does up he on my lap does he speak wookie in the solo movie yeah he does uh when he first meets um he doesn't get i i don't think he gets subtitles he might get subtitles it's been a minute since i've watched that movie yeah likewise but, um uh yeah he 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 definitely speaks it when they meet in the uh prison pit ah okay okay yeah i for some reason the the contents of that movie are like escaping my brain even though it's a movie that are I, I guess it would be the most recent star wars i've seen sans uh the most recent one the sure. the third the the climactic the end size yeah well certainly the end um <laughs> The climactic end of a of a whole saga. D yep. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Bookie. So bo I opened Bookie up and it says, "Hey, Phantom Roulette, Lore Masters Investigation. Uh, I uh, I want to hear you guys your thoughts on non-player characters. Ooh. Ooh. Hey. So yeah, it, it can I start off with like a little a little prepared statement of course yeah so in my mind like a big part of any successful role-playing game campaign is the colorful cast of characters that accompany your party on their adventures yes right uh so it's like be it a, an interesting bartender or like a wacky librarian or maybe even someone who eventually joins your party full-time 
Uh, and not player characters kind of like help to make your world feel real rather than, uh, you know, this is something I think about a lot. And uh, when, when discussing Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm pretty sure there have been like jokes about this on like um, the Simpsons and other shows like it, where it's like the, like, you know, Homer leaves the bar and then the guys at the bar are like, all right, everyone maintain your like still position until he gets back where it's like, but like, you know, a, a vibrant, cast of characters makes it feel like this is a real world rather than just kind of like sets of a play or a movie that your characters are moving through uh not every npc like has to be the best or the most memorable but some are like more likely to stick out a little bit and i think it's those characters specifically that make the games more uh more fun and more memorable so i'm gonna start off by asking you a question cody also well said i agree with all those things oh, um thank you yeah but anyways yeah hit uh, me with that first question it's, yo it's interesting right because it's like i'm not actually done that much dming yeah i've only done it like really once but it's like i feel like this is it's fun for for both like both sides of the of the um screen because it's like i'm sure that there are moments where it's like I ask you like what's the character's name and then you get like you have to like you you'll go like burr, 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 and you'll like pull out a list of names or whatever or like sometimes you'll forget what like an NPC sounds like and we meet up with them again after like a certain time it's like oh hey what's up like Gronderly and then you're like what the fuck did Gronderly sound like <laughs> but um you know it's I feel like it's one of those things where it's like you know, you have to, you know, it, it gives you a chance to, to play in the space a little bit as well. So my first question for you is how much prep do you put into like an, a non-player character? Are there some that you just kind of like assume will become more beloved than others? Oh boy. What a loaded question. I feel like, um, so behind peeling behind the curtain of being a dungeon master, um, to answer the first part of that question, how much time do I put in? Uh, it varies. Um, mm -hmm. If they're going to be a very important character for you to finish a quest or be a part of your backstory or things like that, things that I know are going to get brought up again, I put a lot of effort into those characters, whether it's just knowing like the cadence of their speaking patterns or just knowing how they would react to things and like kind of what their ideals are. Like, I'll do a lot of that stuff, but honestly, for a lot of the NPCs that you meet, like the ones that you're going to probably meet maybe once or twice or barely, like barely get through a scene with them, honestly, it's just, it's a name generator. Um, mm. I'm, you know, oh, they're, they're a dwarf named and then click, 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 click. Yeah, that's that's Gom Gom Gombi the the iron caster and he is a dwarf, you know, like it really depends. Uh I usually have like a a, le a list of names up or nearby like within you know, within a couple of clicks so it's not like completely thrown off. Sure. But some of those characters uh turn out to be more um intricate or elaborate. Um I used to I used to be in kind of the idea that like I only made important characters as needed. So like if you guys latched onto a character after the first interaction, I'm like, okay, now I will build that person up. Like sure. There was a character in our first campaign and he was a wizard who lived by himself and he had through a series of unfortunate events became a refuge for people of variety of a variety of religions and uh magics and he was just gonna be this old dude like this kind of you know younger wizard who you know had a, a simple quirk that he liked to touch the tip of his fingers and that was it um but the party loved using his place as a place of refuge for other people so often that i had to make him an actual character <laughs> <laughs> and actually build him out to be something else so it really uh the the short answer is it super yeah. varies but as of late i have grown um 
I find that the characters that you guys remember the most are the ones that I put effort in. So I tend sure. to, in most cases, for interesting stuff, whether it's hiccups along the way or people who are like, hey, I need you to do this thing for this reason. Like, those are the characters that matter. Um, sure. Can I ask you a follow-up question? Yeah. Just out of curiosity. So I know that, um, you know, you're often running a couple of campaigns at a time. Yeah. Uh, but you try very hard to, or, or rather, all of your campaigns exist in like the same shared universe. Yeah. Um, are there ever like NPCs that surprise you where it's like, wow, Group A really loved this guy, and Group B just was like, eh, nice to meet you, and just like keeps walking. Like, does that ever happen? Like, and then you sometimes were like, ah, oh, put so much work into <laughs> this guy that Party Two just like walked right past. Um. I mean, so here's the thing. I I, I definitely didn't have like yes, that has happened before, to the to the effect of like I made a character for one group and they really love that character, and then another group didn't like the the bartender at the first town that you were in, mm -hmm. in our first campaign. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Who ended up being a love interest for one of the players and just a general like. Like, he turned out to be... I made him an actual character. But for a lot of other games who used this individual NPC as well, most of them didn't give a shit about the guy. Um, huh. I didn't have the same reaction. Like, I'm never really upset if people don't latch on to a character because, like, obviously that's, like, there's a reason behind that. Like, you know, it could... Sure, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I've had that happen before. Like, I'm... I often run many one shots or many, um, at, you know, two concurrent games, like the game that I'm running with you. And then the game that I was talking about earlier with my other friends, those are actually, uh, they are playing several months before the events of your campaign start. Oh, interesting. So a lot of things they kind of bump into are the effects of what your campaign's doing interesting yeah so the big you know one of the big key world moments in in our in our in this shared universe was the development of a six shooting revolver um who would have who would do such a who thing would do such a thing but it became such a big point that in the other game they are now starting to see the first renditions of that like show up on the streets oh boy yeah which is a plot point that we're currently dealing with currently um but yeah i mean yeah uh the the npc thing it happens a lot actually um and it's because i run two very different games um sure our game has um there there's uh, i don't want to like nitpick like it's kind of the, not the point of this lore master but you guys just run two different games and so the characters i make for your game yeah. don't always register the same vibe as the other game sure 100 percent. i get that yeah it was a curiosity thing yeah so i have a question for you yeah and this goes and you know uh i didn't i didn't mean for this to just be a conversation about our last campaign but here it is what was the most memorable npc in our last campaign and what was it that made them memorable um that's I, it's tough right yeah it's it's interesting because you know there there's always characters that you kind of like latch on to that you know like once again you know dungeons and dragons is a is a game where it's often as as few as two to as many as like you know six or seven people um building a world together and so everyone kind of i think is drawn to different characters for different reasons um and i think that my answer would probably have to be um uh uh da, 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 da. Oh, I'm forgetting their name what was the name the person who ran the temple of gustav in south shore there was a there was a priest that I got, I got pretty close to. Holy shit! I forget religion. that dude's name. It's um, been so long since we've played. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. He was, um, yeah, he was just a priest. But, um, 
he was one of those it, characters that I made very, you know, last minute was just kind of like, he's a guy that's going to give you a quest to go somewhere else. But like, if you like him, we'll come back to him and we'll kind of build him up. Well, it's, it's funny, right? Because I think there's a couple of reasons that kind of fall back on this, which is that um, that is, that represents a period of the campaign where uh, I and another character kind of split off. Yeah. And so this character, um, it's funny because it's like the religion of like basically Cody's Cody's version of Bacchus or Dionysus. Yeah. Um, and this guy was like kind of weirdly a stick in the mud <laughs> about a lot of things. And so it was like very funny for my character who was like kind of just walking chaos to to interact with this guy who was like not necessarily prim and proper. Like he knew how to have a good time. But then he ended up like taking care of our kid, like our adopted orphan kids um, and things. And so it was just we kind of formed this like weird, sweet relationship with one another where it was like he didn't approve of my methods, but like he wasn't going to get in my way either. And so I, I really appreciated that that interaction, which is a shame that I'm forgetting his name. But like it was always fun because I would just come to him. I'd be like, all right. So anyway, like we're going to go and do dot, dot, dot. And he would always just kind of like sigh and rub his temples and be like all right so like what do you want the kids to have for dinner tonight and it's like cool see you in like a week and then like right off <laughs> um we weren't the best dads but anyway <laughs> yeah i would say i would say that um that's that's my that was my character uh my favorite npc from the first one yeah I, you know right. i'm trying to look for his name <laughs> um but i realized uh, my notes were absolutely atrocious like on a level that i couldn't even begin to fathom for this yeah, my game taking is pretty bad too which is why i rely on uh smarter people well, to keep our notes right i've gotten better uh, at this but yeah i just don't i like i also have a pretty good like like recall i would say that like i have like in like in the like the high like and a par- if party members are listening, they might disagree with this assessment, but like I have like a pretty good recall of like the meta things that go on. Sure. And then I don't remember specific characters' names, which just only adds to more humor when I give them a bad wrong name, and then that's the name that ends up sticking. Right, right. Um, so anyway, my second question for you. So how do you determine an NPC's skill set? Like, is there a generic one that you use and then beef up if they start to become a little bit more important? I'm talking like specifically things like insight checks or their deception checks against us. Yeah. So oftentimes I, I will run somebody like it it depends. Um, If the NPC is just kind of a one note character who I'm never going to use again, I, Mm -hmm. I honestly will just take something from the monster stat book that fits. So like in a lot of cases for like a lot of like, low level individuals who are not important. Like I use the bandit or guard stat because they're pretty yeah. flat line. Like they're, they're fairly basic, but they're not bad either. Um, It really depends on sometimes I'll, you know, th- there are certain characters that are like, not that like I've, I have run wizards who had the arch wizard stat block, which is like a C like a pretty high CR character. So they have access to all mm-hmm. sorts of spells and shit like that. It really depends on the character and what mood I'm in. But if they do become more prominent, I do often th- link abilities that they're good at. And I usually pick three like, you know, okay. oh, like they're charismatic, they're insightful, but they're also like really good runners. So they're athletic, but like, you know, it really depends on the character. But yes, when they become important enough, I usually kind of go this person would be good at at least three things and I would give them similar bonuses to that of like proficiency. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And then my second question is if your character bombish in our current game became an NPC for something else, what would you do to make them fun and or interesting? Hmm. So I, I feel like if, if Bamesh was an NPC in another character in another player's game, I would I would think of them 
as kind of like Q from a James Bond movie. Okay. Um, so very rarely would you see this character like outside of their workshop. Sure, sure. Um and and uh as as you and the characters are kind of like walking through, like, oh, we gotta go talk to to Bombish, like there's almost always like, you know, something like you're blowing up in the background or like um, you know, like an intern like walking by like rubbing their eyes because like they were temporarily blinded or something and it's just like uh bombesh is almost always like like tinkering with something and then like you know all right so anyway let's test this out and then like he'll like throw the crossbow across the room and see if it like automatically sets up and starts firing and things like that so i would i would imagine it as sort of a a a bondy q type character who's just nice. always kind of working on something yeah um and I think that's actually a really good answer to a to a thing that I wanted to bring up at some point, which was creating a fun or interesting NPC in a lot of cases. And this has been for me personally, I have done like I've done things like that where I just take something that I really like, like Q from Bond and be like, I want that character in my game. And so you just, you know, you, you, you know, you file off all the, you know, non fantasy stuff, give them a different name and boom, you have an interesting and fun NPC. Like a lot of times it's like, Ooh, I really like that Western accent. I want like a cowboy in my game to come strolling into the bar and create beef with the party. Like creating fun and interesting NPCs is just like, for me specifically, it's a lot of like, who who can I like what pop culture reference can I like borrow from and then like mm. tweak some things about it or what is a what is a interesting quirk or perhaps something that like kind of goes against normals for meeting a person like this like for instance the character who you liked in our last campaign I wanted to create someone who was the head of a church of basically chaos parties and debauchery and have him be a straight laced individual. And yeah. that was really the kind of idea that I had. And then from there I added more as needed. Um, and that's how a lot of my characters kind of get developed. Um, your guys is kind of, he's your handler. He's the guy who kind of, He's the, he's the guy who keeps you in check in your current campaign. Sure. Like, I just had a couple of ideas. Like, I wanted him to be... Um, I kind of wanted him to have the, that same excitement as Fox Mulder, but I wanted him to be in a fantasy world. Because I really wanted to hit home that we were doing a very X-Files-style campaign. So, like, when he finally met six individuals who could, like, work together and, like, not freak out over, like, mind parasites. He was like, oh, fuck, this is dope, I'm in. And is usually, in most cases, he's really excited to hear about what the party's doing. Um. So, yeah, I mean, it's stuff like that. And to me, he is a fun and interesting NPC to run, but also I know that the party's like, oh, yeah, our hot daddy... <laughs> so yeah you know i know you guys like him so that's all that's that was like my point making a fun or interesting npc doesn't have to be hard it can be as simple as like man i want a tony stark character in a fantasy world sure and then you can just like file off tony stark and put someone else in there and then boom you've got a tony stark character like it's kind of the yeah. same way you create like a fun or unique player concept, except in this case, it's an NPC that may or may not show up throughout the game. Sure. They might only be there like once in a blue moon. You, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I think that uh, you kind of hit on something that I thought I think is interesting, which is, you know, it's like, I want to do this, but like maybe make it a little bit more fantasy. And it's like, I feel like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is one of those, unique situations where it's like you can maybe push the envelope like maybe even a teensy bit like maybe you'll have players at the table who like out and out reject it where it's like no 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 you can't have you know dot 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 at the table or whatever but i feel like you know um 
kind of playing it by ear and then um there's nothing to stop you from creating you know it's like these characters are you know it's like you can have a cowboy in a in a fantasy setting so long as you know they you know if there's no guns in your world they just don't have like a six shooter or whatever um but yeah i think that you know it's it's like i said npcs are are the things that i think can take a a good campaign to to the next level so yeah 100 percent. and hey cody i have a question for you yeah if people listening to this episode liked what they heard and they want to learn more, where can they learn more? They can go to our website at www.fandomroulette.com where you can find our bios. You can find when I'm streaming. You can find all of the episodes live as they're coming out. And if you go all the way to the bottom, there's a little form that you can fill out. No, no information other than maybe like your internet tag or whatever, but you can ask us questions that you would like us to, or topics rather, you would like us to tackle on Lore Master's investigation. And hey, Cody, if uh, people want to tell an episode, uh, if they want to tell a friend about an episode, uh, but they don't listen to necessarily use the same podcasting apps, where are some places that people can find our episodes we are all over this big world wide web we are on youtube soundcloud spotify google play stitcher itunes and just about every rss pod catching feed out there all you got to do is search for fandom roulette and if someone wants to share with us a funny meme or let us know that they like what we're doing or things like that where are some places where people can get in contact with us well if you like twitter we are on Twitter at fandom r underscore podcast. That is our Twitter handle. And if you uh, not not super familiar with those or don't like using those, we are also on Facebook and Instagram. Just search fandom roulette. Also, please remember to like, rate, review, and subscribe. Yeah. Uh, ring the bell. Punch it. Uh, leave a comment. Share an episode with a friend. Uh, any any feedback we get, like, uh, uh you know. Uh, any feedback we get helps us rise up those ranks helps us get into algorithms lets us know what others. you like and what you don't yeah. like exactly and i and hey oh go ahead cody and hey if you're here you there's there are a bajillion podcasts out there uh the fact that you're here listening to us uh we are super grateful and we appreciate your uh listenership i was gonna yeah, say you, you took the words right out of my mouth yeah i was gonna say viewership but that didn't feel right for some reason and... <laughs> what what are ears but the eyes of the sides of the head yes i like this now i have this weird idea of eyeballs on the side of heads i'm gonna make that someday so anyway <laughs> yes it's because said thank you so much for spending some time with us uh we appreciate you being here and signing off for Phantom Roulette, this is Joe. And I'm Cody. And as always, stay nerdy. Stay super nerdy. Nerdy, 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 nerdy,